Hi, welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to look at request slash reply messages in NATS. Now, you may be wondering why would I want to do request slash reply messages. Basically, when you set a request, you're going to say, hey, I need to get back a response within so and so time. If I don't, I'm going to consider this an error and basically the message wasn't delivered. So that is why you want to be able to do request slash respond reply messages to ensure the delivery. Let's take a look at the code that we had before um, for our publisher. And nothing new, I'm just simply focusing on that for loop that I had and publishing a hello world message. And so now I want to attach to my or include in my message a count only so that we could keep track of which message. The way when we send a message, if we can't send it, we're not going to increase our count, right? And when we receive a message, we know which message we receive. That, that's all. Before we were just saying hello world, hello world, and you couldn't really tell which message it was. And so for that reason, we'll now just say that we'll set in this data, which we're going to cast to byte, right? So nothing new there. The sprintf is simply creating a string. Now to start sending request messages, again, these are messages not just publish and forget, but requested messages that where we say, here's a request and I expect a response. We'll just change it from publish to request. But I also said that request messages have a timeout associated with them. So what this message, this line is saying is that as the publisher, I'm going to send a request. So it's a type of message for which I expect some kind of response. And I'm going to wait half a second which is 500 milliseconds to get a response. How do I know if this message failed or not? Well, I need to check the error, right? Simply putting a timeout doesn't tell me anything. It's just how long I should wait to send this message or not should really wait to say, oh, this message wasn't delivered or picked up by any, um, you know, client. And so I need to be able to check the error. And because this is a request, I'm saying that I want a response for it. And so the re response come back to me as a reply message. So first thing we should do is check to see if we even got to send our request successfully. And so we will do the typical go thing, check if the error is nil or not nil. And if it's not nil, I'm going to log a message saying, hey, we had an error sending this message and you know, just basically spit out the count or the message that was the problem because we're keeping this, you know, count. And of course, an error message saying why we couldn't send it. And then if we couldn't send it, we want to continue. Now, right now, as it is, if we can't connect or there's something else, we could be doing this pretty fast. So I don't want to do that. So I still want to wait like a second after I try to send, even if it's successful or it fails before trying to send it again. So I don't like start to do this too fast, right? And so let's put our sleep immediately after we our request um, method call. So now I'm kind of happy with this. The only thing left to do is to say, well, if I can send successfully, right? There's no error. That means I get a reply. And so I want to be able to say, I send message number XYZ or message, you know, count and I got a reply. So I'm simply going to print that out as string in this case. So that's that's all there is for the publisher. So now let's go run this code and see what happens. Now, when we fire our publisher, you can see that it's trying to send a message. And of course, the count is not increasing because it's failing. We don't have a client register to or subscribe into those messages yet. And now when we start up our subscriber, and notice how our message changed. The message changed from no responder to timeout because now it's not an issue of there's no one there to receive the message. It's that we're not getting an acknowledgement or a response to our request. Somebody's, somebody's picking up the message, but they're not responding to it. So the client need to do something very specific, right? They, it's not just they pick up the message, you actually have to respond to it. Because remember, we're looking for a reply. So let's now switch to the subscriber code and see what we have to do for the subscriber. We finished, believe it or not, 
we, we've done everything we need to do for the publisher. And so for the subscriber, this is the code that we have for the subscriber. And the way we're going to change this is let's just ignore all the other stuff that's not going to change. And we're just going to focus on when we subscribe for messages. We're still going to subscribe to the subject. But what we want to be able to do is say that oh, we're going to respond once we get a message, right? So in our call back here, we're actually going to, let's say, do some work and respond. Or maybe we don't need to do any work. We just need to say, oh, I got your message. Maybe we are expected once we say we got the order, we can go ahead and process the order later. The important thing is we acknowledge that we picked up, the, somebody picked up the order. And so that's it. We're just going to say M that response. And this is a, this response method on our message M is just a convenient message for us. There are other ways in which you can respond and you can construct the next message yourself with the topic and all that sort of stuff. But it's just easy because we just say respond and it takes care of knowing where to send back that message to, right? Because remember, it came from somewhere, from a client. So now when we say respond, it knows how to send it back to that client. And so what we're going to do is reply with some data. So we have to construct the data we're going to reply with. And so what we can do is respond with a message to acknowledge the specific message that we got. So we need to know the count for the message that we got. And so what we can do is then save the data from the message that was sent into this data variable. Then we can try to use the scanf, right, which is scan from a string. So format s means scan from a string and scanf. So we can say we want to scan out of the data string. And the format specifier is that we're going to look for a string space and then another variable. And in this case, we want to say we'll look for temp, put the other string in temp, and then if you find an integer, put it in count. That's what we want, because the reason why is we know our, the message we receive is a set of string, you know, with some ASCII characters followed by an integer. So we, that's what we're trying to do here. And this is not going to work, I'll tell you that. But we need to have a variable for the string temp. If this works, what we'll do is we'll have the message that was sent, which says hello world and some number, we'll have hello world in temp, and then we'll have the number in count. And then what we can do is construct now our reply, which is going to be another string that says acknowledge message number count, right? Because we're assuming here that we pulled out the count from the message that we received. The only thing left is to cast our string um, reply to a slice of bytes, and this should be it. So let's run it and see if this works. So when we run this code, we'll see that, oh, hey, we, we are acknowledging the messages. The publisher is, notice the publisher is increasing the message counts, which basically indicates that, oh, I don't have an issue with the messages I tried to send. They're being acknowledged in the time that I specified or I was willing to wait, you know, that five, half a second. The problem here, though, if we look at the output of that message from the publisher, it all says zero. And that's because our client that's receiving the message and acknowledging them is not extracting the correct value. It's not doing that. And, and the real problem is really is in SCANS. SCANS really look to um, take your input and use a space. Every um, space and every white space, it considers a different value. And so we don't have a good way then to say that, oh, I only want you to skip over so many ASCII um, or so many words before you try and read the integer, right? Or so many, so much, so many words of text before you try and read the integer. It would be too complex and not worth the headache to try to do it because we can split it, take the last field, all this other stuff, convert it from a string to an integer, to an ASCII or an integer. We don't want to do all that stuff. So I think one of the easiest things we can do is simply use a um, struct to send the fields that we want or the values, the payload we want with the count, and then we can use that for encoding and decoding, and that's just going to make our life uh, 100 times easier, in my opinion. So let's go back to our um, public publisher. And if we have a payload um, in our model package, 
And so the data field will just send this message. It doesn't change. We can initialize the ones. And then we'll, in our for loop, we'll just simply set the count, the current count on our payload, right? Now we can just encode our um, value here, PL, using JSON Marshall, which just takes it and return a slice of bytes and an error. We don't care about the error because we assume that there shouldn't be any problem encoding this. So now our data is already a slice of byte. So that's why in the next line when we say we want to do a request and pass in data, we don't have to do any casting or anything. And so this is it. And so before I run the code, let's just go fix the subscriber one time because there's nothing interesting just running this uh, big deal. We'll just see that the data is sent over now as JSON. So in our subscriber, this is our main function again. We just finished working on this where we saw that sketf didn't work. So we still want to use that struct that we created. And so what we can do is create a new payload um, value. And here I'm using a pointer to a new payload. And notice I'm doing it inside of this callback function. The reason why is because I have multiple messages. I don't want to reuse you know, the same object because, you know, val the same value because it could be a risk condition and I might see ro the wrong thing. So instead, I'm not going to share that value. So within the function itself, I'll create a new PL value and PL variable of type payload. And then I'm going to get rid of casting our data to a separate variable because we don't need to. Instead of using scanf, I can simply use JSON on Marshall and on Marshall the data from our message directly into our payload variable. Finally, my responses message or my reply message is simply going to be setting the count that I get from my payload. And that's it. And then I could of course print out data that came in that message. And now if we run our code, we can see that we are sending the message, we're getting the count, we're getting the proper acknowledgement for the message. The other thing we can do is run multiple clients. And what do you think happens there? Well, notice each one of our clients are gonna acknowledge the message. But from the point of view of the publisher, it sent one message and it doesn't care how many subscribers are interested in that message, it only cares that it got an acknowledgement. And we can see this because if we kill our first subscriber, you can see the publisher doesn't care. It just keep going because it got a response or a, you know, a response to its request, right? It got a reply. So it doesn't matter. And notice there's no hiccup or there's no double message from the publisher because as soon as they got one reply, it, it, that is fine. It moved on and just sent another message. But notice that just as before, even though we had multi, we have now multiple subscribers, each still got a copy of the same message. So this raises an interesting problem. If the problem we were trying to solve was that I have a food ordering service or website I'm building, right? And I wanted restaurants within a certain area of the user to be able to acknowledge that they got the order. Now I have introduced another problem. At first, <laughs> I had no way of ensuring that the order, the, the customer order was actually picked up or is going to be fulfilled. Now I have another problem, which is multiple restaurants could be fulfilled in the same order. So we could see, we'll see in the next video how we can solve that problem. But hopefully you see how easy it is to do these increasingly more complex things and these messaging paradigms or messaging patterns in with NATS. Not to say that all other messaging technology or message brokers can do it. I just find that all NATS is very, very easy to reason about and build some very complex application. Um, please let me know if you have any sort of problems or anything. Um, finally, before I leave, if you don't mind, thumbs up the video, leave comments, and let me know, just even if to say thanks, just to say that it works, just to say that oh, you like what you see, or maybe it didn't work, or maybe you don't like what you see. Um, definitely some sort of feedback. Um, the comments help. All right, take care. Stay
stay safe see you in the next video